Hello all and welcome to a new WordMA tutorial. We will have a deep look at the new VAR packaging system, which has been recently introduced in VAM 1.19. In general, VAR files are a replacement for the legacy VEC packaging system, which has some big disadvantages. This tutorial is divided into three main sections. An introduction for users, a theoretical part about the philosophy behind VAR files, mainly for creators, and a practical part where we will create some VAR files by ourselves. So, we begin with information which is relevant for the users. First, what is a VAR file? VAR package files are, just like the previous VAC packages, simple zip files with content for VAM but the file extension is called VAR. This file extension enables WordMA to interpret the packed content in a way, which we will see now. The VAR add-on package system has been created to share content for VAM with the community. They can include all kinds of contents, like scenes, clothing, looks, hairstyles, morphs and assets. The VAR files are created within VAM. The main user advantage of VAR files over VAC file is that they will save hard disk space, a lot of hard disk space, as it ideally will prevent all multiple copies of the same content in various subfolders. Everybody likes PowerPoint presentations, right? No? However, let's assume one or more creators will release an episode-based story within VAM. All the episodes play in one environment, let's say a detailed villa with several rooms. This villa is a big unity asset with 500 megabyte file size. Then the persons in the story have some outfits, which are also worn in several episodes. Outfits can also have a big file size due to the used texture files, let's assume 100 megabyte. Finally, the protagonists have special looks which include high quality skin textures, all in all also 100 MB. And then we also have some unique content, like animations, samples and small assets, which are only used in this set of scenes. The scene file or scene files directly link to the assets and clothing in their relative paths. In our example all those items sum up into about 700 megabyte of content, which is needed for the first set of scenes. The creator releases this first episode as a VAC package. So far, so good. But now the story proceeds and a second episode with some unique animations, samples and assets is released, but as said, it plays in the same environment, the characters wear partly the same clothings and of course they have the same look. As VEC package distribution, all this content is added again. And then, two weeks later, we got the final third episode of that great story and here the shared content is included again. Instead of this episode example, we can also imagine that the same environment is used independently in scenes from several different creators, but the result is always the same. We have basically the same assets in several VEC files and as VEC files are automatically extracted into own subfolders when loaded, the assets are even duplicated once more into these subfolders. So in our example we end up with the used hard disk space of 2100 megabytes. Now here comes what the new VAR packages can do for us. The big VLA environment should be distributed separately as a VAR file. Same counts for the clothing and the look. Then the scene creator makes the first episode of the story, but the scene file and unique content, which should also be released as a VAR file, just references to the standalone VAR files, including the environment, the closing and the look. So the episode var file only includes one or more scene files, animations and the unique content, which is only used in this particular episode. And the same happens for the second episode and the third episode. You see the difference, right? Everything sums up only to 700 megabyte, which is only one third of the space 
that was occupied with VAC files with exactly the same content. So the VAR file concept is all about modularity and references. But to make this easy for the user, VAM takes care on all the content management and path. Let's see this in the next section. How to install VAR files. This is the easy part. All the user needs to do is to download the relevant VAR files and place everything into one single folder inside of the VAM main directory. It is the add-on packages folder. When we install VAM 1.19 and later, this folder is created during installation and it includes already a couple of VAR files. The user just needs to drop the downloaded additional content in this folder. When we have a look at the file names, we see that it includes the creator name, the content description and a revision ID. This revision ID is used when the same item, for instance a plugin script, gets updates and VAM will always use the latest version by default. Revisions are also used in the new file browser, which we discuss in the next section. As said, the user can just drop all VAR packages independently of the file type like clothing, look, asset or environment into the add-on package folder because VAM analyzes the content of all VAR files by use of the included meta.json file. VAM then displays the content only in the relevant sections, means for instance, clothing item VAR packages are not shown in the load scene file browser. However, for people who like to keep things organized by themselves, it is also possible to create subfolders for different content types like scenes, clothing, hairstyles, assets and so on. For demonstration purposes, I create a hairstyles folder and copy the JC Reanimator Hair Curly Bob 1 package in there. VAM will scan the whole subfolder structure for VAR files, analyzes them and makes them available in the relevant areas. How to load, use and manage VAR files. VAR files are generally loaded over the various file browsers which are used within the VAM user interface. The most prominent one is the load scene file browser. Experienced users of VAM will recognize immediately that the file browsers have changed from previous VAM versions. It now includes a shortcut list on the left side. This shortcut list is the main way to access VAR file content. Note that the list is context sensitive. It only shows shortcuts to VAR files which are relevant for your current tasks, in this case load scenes. You will also notice that there is a only show latest toggle on top of the shortcut list. If this toggle is activated, all previous revisions of shortcuts to the same VAR file are hidden. In this case, meshedvr.bonusscenes.8 is hidden. In addition, there are several different ways to display content in the content view on the right side. The first shortcut leads to the normal saves scenes directory. Here we will not see any content which is stored in VAR files. The next shortcut Add-on Packages Flattened lists all context-related content which is stored inside VAR files in one big list. The shortcut Add-on Packages Filtered also shows all context-related VAR files, but here we can browse VAR files and existing subfolder structures within the Add-on Packages folder. I previously mentioned the possibility to create subfolders inside the Add-on Packages folder. If Add-on Packages Filtered is enabled, this however will lead to the effect that all created subfolders are visible in all file browsers. So for instance, the created Hairstyles folder will also be visible in the Load Scenes browser, but it does not show any content within, even if the JC Hairstyle VAR file is there as we know. Ok, let's head over to some other file browsers. 
Activate Edit Mode, click on the model and select Root. Then we have a look at the Clothing tab as example. The principle of accessing add-on packs is also exactly the same for other contents like hairstyles or plugins. The add-on packs are either accessible over the shortcut list in the respective file browser like just seen in the load scene dialog or directly in the content browsers of the clothing, hair and skin textures. All clothings which are stored inside VAR files are shown with a different background color and in addition we can identify package contents with a box icon and the pack revision number. Also here we have a context sensitive item listing. As we are looking on the female model we only see add-on packs for female characters even if there is also a male clothing package in the add-on folder. To see those male clothing items we need to open the clothing tab of a male model. And here they are. Ok, back to the female model. Whenever we click on the box icon, we open the add-on package manager where we can inspect and manage all our VAR files. The package manager can also be opened over the icon on the main menu panel. Let's go from left to right and start with the filter buttons. As said earlier, even if all types of add-on packages are just dropped into the add-on packages folder, which looks quite messy when you open the folder in the Windows File Explorer, VM knows exactly what the content type of each add-on package is. So you can filter the different add-on types here in the package manager by all, clothing, hair, images, morphs, textures, plugins, scenes, sounds and Unity assets. Depending on the selected filter, the plugin list next to the buttons updates accordingly. If we click on one of the packages, the detail browser on the right side shows the information that is stored inside the meta.json file which is part of each VRR package. This content has hopefully been filled properly by the package creator. The first field on top shows the package description. The next field shows credits for contents which is used in this package. For instance, if a scene uses a look or clothing from another creator, the credits should appear here. And then, this is a real improvement, we have an instructions field which can include information on how the add-on is to be used. In particular with scripts and plugins, this can become handy because the instructions can also be watched directly in VR mode. And then there is a promo field that should contain a link to a website or Patreon page where the content of the pack can be downloaded. The next field shows the license under which this add-on package is released. Read it to get information on what you allow to do with this add-on. This is mainly relevant for creators. The contents field shows all items and folders which have been included to this package. This is basically the material which is really inside of the package. The references field lists all the dependency to materials which are not included in this package. So this is important information for the user as he must ensure that he has all linked add-on packages stored locally inside his add-on packages folder. If a reference package is already installed, a click on the line in the reference list will open the detail page of this package. In case a referenced file for a VAR package is missing, let me show this and remove one pack. Refresh. VAM will show an error message upon load. And the reference line in the package manager is now shown in red color. So here the user needs to download the add-on and place it into the add-on packages folder. By the way, in order to refresh the add-ons list without leaving VAM, we can use the rescan add-on packages button in the file tab as just seen. 
The creator of VAM, MeshVR, promised that in near future, VAM will offer an auto-download feature for referenced but missing add-on packs. This will be done over a website where creators can register their add-on packs and provide a download link. Ok, now I make that JC VAR file available again. Refresh. And there is a delete button on top, which allows to delete not needed packs from the add-on packages folder. So basically, all file management for add-ons can be done right inside VAM. The unpack button lets you unpack a VAR file into a separate folder and it renames the original VAR file to var.orig. One final note on the user press tab. Here everybody can make own notes for each add-on pack. These notes are stored in the add-on packages user prefs folder. For looks including external morphs, the user can also specify whether the morphs shall be listed in the morph section even without having the look loaded. Ok, I guess this is all which users should know about the new VAR packaging system. Let's start now with information for the creators. The philosophy behind VAR files. Boring but important theory. Let's have a look about the intended ways to create VAR files for different purposes. This information and guideline is more or less taken from the official VAR documentation and statements by Meshed VR himself. First let's have a look at the usage of paid content in our scenes. With a VAC file, usually all used content has to be included into the package. This is nice and convenient with free stuff, but what if we spent hours in scene creation, made some perfect animations, good lighting, but we used that damn sexy but paid dress or asset from our favorite item creator. Well, normally we just post a short video clip on Reddit to get some feedback, but our comment is, sorry, cannot share due to paid content. Or after creation of the VAC file, we could manually remove that dress or asset from the package, which creates error messages and a lot of fiddling for the user, in case he wants to install that dress manually on his side. The user has to use exactly the path which is stored in the scene file. That can be a standard folder, but also a subfolder of the VAC structure. Not good. So what makes VAR packages better here? Ideally, the creator of the dress has released it already as VAR file. Then we create our scene and for the look, we dress up the model with the dress in that VAR file. The philosophy behind VAR is that if we now create our own VAR file from the scene with that brilliant animations, VM knows that the dress is not located as source file in the standard folder in custom clothing, but that it came inside of a VAR package. So VAM assumes that this dress has been shared and is available somewhere else for download. Free or paid does not matter, because when we create a VAR package with our scene, VAM does not even try to include the dress to our pack. It just creates a reference link to that dress. Actually, VAM will not include any content that is added to the scene from a VAR file into our own package. If the user now opens our scene and does not have that clothing in his add-on folder, he will get a message about the missing item. But if we have done our job correctly and wrote proper credits with a link to the post of that clothing, the user can easily find and download the dress and simply drop the VAR file into his add-on packages folder. In addition, our scene package file will include all relevant reference information, including the promotional links which should be included in the dress package. Sharing own single items. We have several talented creators in the VM community, which are specialized on either environments, clothing, looks or hairstyles. Those creators should start to release their content in single VAR packages, either one clothing item or asset per pack or as clothing or asset collections. But if a creator is a real multi-talent and creates own looks including unique own clothing and hairstyles, he can create one VAR file which includes all those items in one pack. However, if a user only wants to use that clothing or hairstyle from a complete appearance pack, he still has to download the complete big pack. 
but besides of this there are no disadvantages. Some may ask whether VAM will extract the complete pack to hard disk or RAM when the user just wants to include that single clothing to his own model. The answer is no. VAM stream unpacks only items which are used from that pack to the computer's random access memory. If only one clothing item or even a single texture is taken from that pack, only that single clothing or texture is temporarily extracted. Now, where to draw the line, how much modularity is needed? Are micro VAR packs the way to go? The answer is, it depends. Considering that all the included contents are your own creations, you have the free choice. But if the content is easily mixable and reusable by other creators, then single VRRs released in separate download posts are the better way. But if content is really intended to be only used altogether, for example a superhero look with specialized clothing, skin and hairstyle, then it should be released as one single VAR file. Still, I would recommend to release characters independently from scene files and reference to that character VAR files during the scene creation. This allows the users to easily reuse the characters in own scenes without the need to keep the original scene and the scene unique assets. Alright, here are some summarized guidelines. Release own single items like clothing, hairstyles, asset or morph packs as separate VAR files. Also release own scenes as VAR files but only link to existing items in VAR format. Include items to your pack which are only relevant for the particular scene. Include instructions where to find linked VAR files, for example provide links to Reddit or Patreon posts, but do not include existing VAR files or content of existing VAR files to your own packs. And do not distribute VAR files from other creators together with your own VAR files. Ok, now we finally can start with the practical part, the creation of our own VAR files. I mentioned in the last section, before creating a complete scene, we should first create VAR files for those items which we intend to reuse as well in other scenes. As my clothing creation skills are nearly non-existent, I will use the clothing made by the talented creator Animi Konai in this example. This clothing was not yet released as VAR file and of course I will not release it either. I will just use it to explain the process of VAR creation. Same counts for a kitchen environment released some time ago by GabyRx. The links to the reddit posts of those items are shown in the video description. Ok, let's get started. All VAR packages have to be created with the package builder. We can access the package builder over its icon on the menu panel or over the file menu tab. But in order to be able to create a package, we have to set our creator name in the user preferences on the misc tab. I'll use just looking for nothing for all, but we'll delete the files after the tutorial. We start with the environment and open the package builder where we now see the creator name in the top left corner. This creator name will be present in all package file names from now on. First we want to give the package a name. This asset bundle from GBRX contains a kitchen environment, so we just name it kitchen env. Depending on the content we want to add, we can either use add directory, which will include all files in that folder, or we can select one or more single files with the add file button. This asset bundle contains only one file, so we use the add file button. Over the shortcuts we can browse to the relevant folder of the source files. In this case it is custom assets. Then we select the GBRX kitchen asset bundle. This is the only item that we want to add to this package. Then click on prep package. Now we fill out the description, credits and instructions. Remember this is important. It is recommended that we add also a link to our Patreon page or our website to make it easier for the user to find our package. Then we select the license which fits to our package. We can see the meanings if we click on the entries in the drop down list. As we only added one single asset bundle, we do not see anything in the reference license report field. Now we can open the folder with the package content for review. 
If all is ok, click on Finalize Package. That's it, our first VAR pack is created. The file has been automatically added to the Add-on Packages folder. To make it available for selection in VAM, go to the Files tab and click on Rescan Add-on Packages. If we now add our custom Unity asset to the scene, it is important to select the correct version. This counts for everything in the future, as we are the creator of this package and we have, in contrast to the users, both source file and add-on package in WAR format on our hard disk. The important point to remember is, whatever source file we directly link here will be added to the VAR file of the scene. So make sure to link to the previously created VAR pack and not to the original files. Otherwise we will still create duplicate files in different VAR packs. So we click on the Add-on Packages Filtered shortcut and navigate to the Asset Bundle inside of the VAR package. Then we can select one of the included asset versions. Ok, now I load an appearance preset with a look and hairstyle made by me and the dress made by Anime Konai. Let's assume now for the tutorial that everything was made by me and that I am allowed to share the dress within my package. When we open the closing tab, we can see that the dress has no box icon. It means I previously added the closing source files to the model, not a VAR package. This also means that when we now create a VAR package with the complete appearance, the package builder will add the clothing source files including all textures to our VAR pack. Same counts for the hairstyle. To create a VAR file from the complete look, we now open the package builder, click add file and navigate to custom, atom, person, appearance. Then we select the VAP file of our look. So far only the VAP file and the preview picture has been added, but now we see a smart function of the package builder. When we click on prep package, the builder scans the look for dependencies. Oops, nothing happens. But we got a hint on top. Ah, of course, we first have to give the pack a name. So let's name it. Natalie Red Dress. And now click again on Prep Package. Yes, now we can see all the references used in this look. These are the dress geometry and its textures, as well as the hairstyle. We also see fixable nodes, so the builder offers us to include the relevant source files into our package. We do this with a click on the Fix Reference Issues button. Ok. There are now no more external references left and everything has been added to the package. Let's not forget to fill the text fields on the right. Then we check the folder content. And click finalize package. The look including all dependencies has now been saved into the Add-on Packages folder. We do a rescan Click the model Select Root Open the Clothing tab and we see now the neat nightdress as a ready to use packaged clothing item even though it was saved inside a complete look package. This means even if we save the complete look as one pack we have all single items available to reuse in other scenes and combinations. Now the clothings on the model are still the source files, but we can change this to any other clothing or to the packed version. Same for the hairstyle. The packed version is now available ready to use. 
and as well the complete appearance is there. Changing to another look. Then selecting Add on packages filtered. And here we have Natalie again. Easy, no? Ok, let's delete this VAR file again and check out the second approach for appearances, which will be used when our model incorporates items like hair or clothing from other creators or if we want to have the best possible modularity. We open the package manager and click on the Natalie look. By the way, here the user can now see all the content which we have added to the description fields. We can use the delete button on top to remove the look. Oh and uh, if a user does not want to delete a package but prevent it from appearing in the content browsers, he can just uncheck the enable toggle. But now we just delete it. To get a fresh start we also want to delete the preparation folder in the add-on packages builder directory. This is only present on creator side, not for the user. So as a creator I would recommend to delete both var and prep folders directly in the Windows file manager. And we do a rescan. Now we will see that a creator can package clothing items including presets. The clothing presets were not added in the first approach. We open the package builder and then add directory. Now we navigate to the folder with our clothing source files. Usually these will be under custom clothing and then female or male depending on the gender. In there should be a folder with our creator name. This is highly recommended. And then we should have an own subfolder for each clothing. If we created material presets with different colors or textures, they should be stored in there as well. Click select. Again, before we can click prep package, we need to type in a pack name. This is only the dress without the Natalie look, so we name it neat night dress. Spaces are automatically converted to underscores. Then click on prep package. No references in this case, but VAM wants us to describe the pack. Select the license type. Review the prep folder to make sure everything was added. And then click finalize package. The dress including all dependencies has now been saved into the add-on packages folder. Rescan add-on packages and the dress package is now available in the clothing browser. When we select it and click on customize, we see that also all our material presets are available over the add-on shortcuts. The process for the hairstyle is the same. Add file in the package builder, shortcut custom hair female creator name, select the relevant VAM file and all relevant files for the hairstyle are added. However, if you are also created different presets for your hairstyle, I recommend to create also own subfolders for each hairstyle, just like for the clothing. Then the presets can be saved into that folder. Instead of add file like I did now, you can then just use add directory and select the complete hairstyle folder including all presets. I will now add the two VAP preset files manually. Then click on prep package and adding the descriptions. 
Again, we review that everything is included in the prep folder and finalize package. As always, hairstyle including all dependencies has now been saved into the add-on packages folder. I'm now going to quickly create one more VR file with my breathing deluxe plus idle motion script, but I do not comment the process as it is completely the same. Okay, now all our VAR files are in the add-on packages folder and can be distributed separately. But now let's finalize the scene. As you already know, we define what will be added to the package already when we create the scene and look. So now we're gonna make sure that all the created VAR files are used in the scene. Starting with clothing and make sure the pack file is selected. Then checking the hairstyle. Now we add the breathing script over the person's plugin tab. Also here we need to make sure to use the version in the add-on pack, not the source file. And we can adjust some settings in the plugin UI. Ok, now we are ready to save and publish the scene as a VAR file. This time we do this not directly over the package builder, but use a function in the file tab. We click on save scene and add to new package. Providing a name and save. Ok, the pack name has been given already and the scene file was added. Now we can click on prep package. As we have in this case only used VAR files, there are no fixable references. VAR files should not be added to other VAR files, just linked. And this is what you can see under references. The actual content in the scene VAR is only the scene file and the preview image. And now we have also several entries in the reference license report. We are decent and enter our descriptions. I'll mention it one last time here. Scene creators should always give proper credits and do not forget to add links to the creator's posts of the used VAR files. Without these references, the users will have a hard time to find and download the needed files. We review the content in the Windows Explorer, in this case to make sure that we have not added and distribute paid content by accident. And we click the last time on finalize package. Like all other packs, the scene VAR has now been saved into the add-on packages folder. And there is a var.depend.txt with the same name as the package, where the user can quickly see which other files he need to download. In this file the promotional links are listed, so this clearly shows why it is so important to add a link to your Patreon page or even better to the direct download link of the VAR file either on Reddit, Patreon or Mega. Making a hard reset now for testing. Ok, we can access the scene over the add on packages, flattened or filtered shortcuts in the load scene dialog. Yes, it works. So, I hope the secrets of the mysterious VAR files are now totally uncovered for you. If you like my tutorials and want to support me, check out my Patreon page. Happy vamming and stay safe everybody!